Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I'm not here with Geeky Sparkles in this video because uh, we're going to talk about Space Daddy. No, um, actually, she's she's out and about again today. Uh, I am going to talk about Elon Musk, Twitter, and this whole situation. Now, we said when Musk announced that he was going to buy Twitter that the government would absolutely positively try to throw a wrench into things because we can't have that, right? We can't have uh, uh, you know, Elon Musk owning what has become a ridiculously important platform for the government and the media. So I just saw today that the U.S. is going to join 55 nations to set new global rules for the internet. Uh, this, is, this is going to become a battle for the internet. This is, uh, you know, this is the last best chance I think we have at a uh, free and open internet, uh, to have free and open social media, and uh, to have the playing field leveled, and the government can't stand it. The media can't stand it. We're going to talk about some of these ridiculous hit pieces being written on Elon Musk. Uh, we're going to talk about the word that some people's Twitter accounts have been seemingly unbanned uh, that they were shadow banned or something. And I can give you some anecdotal evidence uh, myself. We've actually seen a, a massive uptick in followers on the Clownfish TV Twitter account and my personal Twitter account and Geeky's personal Twitter account. And we haven't done anything different than just tweet the kind of stuff we usually tweet. And we're not even, I don't even consider us really conservatives. Um, but apparently there's some shenanigans going on at Twitter and it feels like they're shredding the evidence before Musk takes over. Uh, we've got articles like this coming from Reuters. Uh, this is a, a serious uh, 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 heaping of copium. Elon Musk probably won't buy Twitter. They're talking about how uh, Musk is still trolling us. He's still kidding as he's tweeting what he plans to do with the website. And I think it's, uh, they're secretly hoping that the government will throw a wrench into things. And they might. I mean, we said before, you know, the FTC, uh, SEC, whoever's, whoever's involved in this could absolutely throw a wrench into things um, for sure. But I mean, this is, this is uh, after Musk came out and said that he, you know, isn't going to turn Twitter into a far right uh, website. He's he's basically going to piss off the far right and the far left equally and make it a sane, uh, middle-of-the-road social media platform. And I think that's all most people are asking for. If you want more extreme politics, there are other platforms out there uh, you can go to. I think most people just want Twitter to be rolled back to what it was around 2009, 2010. Um, you know, but again, the media and the government have, have gotten their meat hooks into it and, uh, activists have gotten their meat hooks into it and they've corrupted the platform. So we're going to talk about this before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys, over 265,000 subs here on YouTube. You can follow us on Twitter at, uh, real clownfish TV and, uh, I'm at neon and geeky is, Desert Star 57. So <laughs> you're going to have to go actually search for her. Uh, she needs to change that handle. But uh, anyway, let's um, let's talk about this first. I, I thought this was really interesting. And I heard anecdotally that some people were getting unbanned from Twitter. Now, I don't think Twitter really had... I mean, I know they have hard shadow bans on people. Um, and we've seen it. We've seen the dashboard, you know, that they've they've been doing that. Uh, I think they tend to lump people into clusters or groups. Uh, you know, I don't know exactly how it works, but if you follow enough of the wrong accounts, if you tweet enough of the wrong things, if your stalkers flag your accounts enough, you know, even if you're not saying anything wrong, I think you get kind of put in Twitter purgatory where you're not actively shadow banned, but you're not being promoted either. And I think that's what's what's going on because um, I have people coming to me now and saying, we're seeing your tweets for the first time in a long time. And it's almost like the muzzle has been taken off. And I'm hearing a lot of uh, anecdotes similar to this. Uh, you know, I know in Clownfish TV, I think we jumped up over a thousand followers uh, almost overnight. 
Now, I think there are some people coming back to Twitter that left a while ago because I'm looking at some of the accounts. I'm like, are these new people? Are they just coming in? Uh, some of them are, and I think some of them are coming into Twitter because they're like, wow, maybe Twitter's going to clean up its act and and uh, maybe it is going to be a decent social media platform under under Musk. And other ones are accounts that have been on Twitter since you know, 2009, 2012, and I think they just got angry and left. I mean, I got angry and left. I left for four or five months um, around the time of the election because I'm like, I can't, I can't deal with it. Just I, I'm talking both sides. Like I cannot deal with this shit and I don't want to deal with it. And uh, it was peaceful. <laughs> you know, it was peaceful. But anyway, uh, yeah, so something's definitely something's definitely going on here. And so I, I did a little digging and apparently if there was a shadow ban, right, on on accounts that Twitter considers problematic or conservative, uh, that has been lifted. And this does feel like like they're, you know, shredding the evidence before Musk comes in because he's probably going to look at the algorithm and be like, what the hell is this? You know, I, I'm, I'm talking free speech and you guys have have so many accounts in purgatory. You know, if somebody has actually violated the terms of service, you know, that's one thing. But if people are just like, oh, you follow the wrong person or, you know, uh, maybe you're, you're pro-choice when it comes to the vaccine, you're not obnoxious about it, but you might have tweeted it once or twice, <clears throat> you know guilty, uh, <laughs> you know, um, you're going to get thrown in with, with all the bad nicks and, uh, there, I, you know, I mean, we know Twitter is run by activists in San Francisco. We know this, they're already freaking out and they're going to go through and basically use the platform to silence anybody they think might be an alt-right Yahtzee, even if they don't follow Trump, even if they're not Republicans, <clears throat> again, guilty, even if freaking president Obama follows them. Again, guilty. Uh, even if they follow a bunch of uh, left-leaning uh, uh, people, um, you're still going to get thrown into that camp, right? Um, anyway, uh, so The Verge even posted this. Conservative Twitter accounts got boost in followers after Musk acquisition data shows. So this isn't like, you know, I mean, again, this could be a bunch of people coming to the platform, but I think it's just a lot of accounts are being unmuzzled. And I, I know some other people on Twitter have gotten their old accounts back. I think Drunk 3PO, uh, his original account was banned because of his uh, uh, very vocal support for Gina Carano, I think, is what led to that. And he got it back, like magic. Like as soon as it was announced that Musk was was probably buying Twitter, all of these accounts just came back online. So social media data analyzed by The Verge shows conservative accounts Winnings and liberals losing out. Well, a lot of liberal accounts are, are quitting too. We've lost some followers. And, uh, you know, it's the case of I think they're just leaving Twitter completely because they're like, well, there goes the neighborhood. Uh, it's not your imagination. Follower accounts on Twitter really have been shifting wildly in response to news that Elon Musk had finalized a deal to acquire Twitter. Uh, data compiled by The Verge from social media statistics site Social Blade shows that in the two days since the deal was completed, influential conservative accounts have increased their follower accounts at roughly 10 times the average daily rate for the month leading up to the acquisition. Meanwhile, liberal accounts have suffered, collectively losing hundreds of thousands of followers April 25th and 26th after a month of gain. Uh, I think it's because a lot of people are quitting Twitter in protest or whatever. Uh, or maybe they're bots. Who the hell knows? The shifts are unlikely to be the result of changes within Twitter's management of the platform. Bullshit. Bullshit. As the deal will not close for months and Musk has not had time to directly affect operations. No, they're shredding the evidence. That's my personal opinion. Like, look, it's, it's very obvious, and I wasn't really paying attention to my own numbers, but when people are coming to me and saying, hey, I haven't seen you in my feed for months and now you're showing up again, and I've been following you for a long time, and I've had several people tell me that, you know, and I've been on Twitter since like 2008, 2009. It's like, yeah, there's definitely something going on. Instead, the shift appears to be an organic reaction to the news with users either joining or leaving the platform in anticipation of Musk's ownership. Somewhat, somewhat. Again, I'm checking the age of some of the accounts, and some of them are old. They're 10 years old. You know, some people, they've been active on Twitter. They just haven't seen my tweets. So I'm telling you, they're, they're, I don't think accounts are always shadow banned per se, but I think they're 
dampened. I think they're discouraged. I think it's kind of a purgatory. And I think YouTube does this too, to some degree. I think if you get into a certain uh, track on YouTube that they kind of clamp down your account to be like, okay, well, yes, you can be on YouTube. Yes, you can monetize on YouTube, but we're only going to show your content to people in this group. We're not really going to actively promote your videos outside of this group of people. And that might only be like, you know, a million people or a couple hundred thousand people or whatever. Like, yeah, we'll actively show and suggest your content to people within that group, but we're not going to, you know, promote your content outside of that. Uh, to investigate the claims, The Verge compiled a list of 100 influential Twitter accounts, 50 each from the political left and right, and each with a minimum of 100,000 followers. Uh, using the data from Social Blade, a service that provides analytics for a range of social media platforms, we pulled 30 days of historical information on the number of followers for each account and calculated the day-to-day -day change as an absolute value and a percentage change. Uh, out of the 50 conservative accounts in our data set, 48 made unusually large follower gains on the 25th and 26th. I can tell you, uh, Clownfish TV did, I did, Geeky did, um, and... Uh, again, I haven't been really actively promoting my own Twitter. Uh, Geeky definitely hasn't been promoting hers. We're just going about business as usual, and we're going up subs like crazy because I think our our tweets are being shown again. I think they were they were you know being hidden from certain people for a long time. Uh, on April 26th, the conservative accounts in our data set gained 17,000 followers on average. Well, I mean, they put it on Fox News and everything, too. So, I mean, there is, there is some truth to what they're saying. But, you know, the precise cause for the dramatic change in follower count is still unclear, although Twitter told NBC News that fluctuations over the same period were a result of an increase in new account creation and deactivation. If true, it would represent a shift of hundreds of thousands of users over a single day, a surprising explanation for news of this kind. Twitter did not respond to a request for comment. It seems like The Verge is skeptical, too. I think... Ex I think what happened was, yeah, I do believe that more conservatives are joining Twitter because they think it's going to be fair. Uh, conservatives who left Twitter are coming back and liberals are leaving in protest. I do believe that. But I think a switch was flipped at Twitter before Elon Musk comes in and starts asking some more questions. And they'll be like, oh, look, Elon, look, yeah, we've been fair. We've been fair. What are you talking about? We're not fair. Elon, we've been fair for, you know, the last two months, you know, or whatever, when he finally gets a chance to look at the data. Um, and yeah, you know, he put out there that uh, he thinks that the far left and far right are going to be equally angry because he wants that, that 80% in the middle, which I think is good because normies don't use Twitter. Normal people don't use Twitter anymore. I don't know if they ever really did. I don't think it was really, I think originally it was more for like tech bros. And uh, I know, I was an early adopter because of, uh, you know, we were into web comics. So people that worked in tech or around tech or with tech, they, they adopted Twitter first and then it kind of expanded out to, to media outlets and, and all that. And then we got an influx of weirdos from Tumblr, <laughs> you know, in like 2017, 2018. And that's when things really went to hell in a handbasket. And then, so we had this influx of weirdos from Tumblr and, you know, they brought their sensibilities with them to Twitter and then they were simultaneously dampening, um, you know, conservative voices and calling, calling any conservative viewpoint hate speech, you know, and I don't know, if, again, I don't think it was an active shadow band. I just think it was um, people being put into purgatory where they would recommend these accounts if you followed accounts similar, similar to them. But if you didn't, you know, they weren't going to just throw you in the timeline like they used to. It used to be that Twitter was actually uh, very democratic. Whoever you followed, um, all the tweets would show up in the order that they were posted. So, you know, people would get pissed off if people were tweeting constantly because that's all you'd see in your timeline was a whole bunch of, you know, tweets from, from this particular person. And people were curating their, their follows and creating lists more because, you know, that's how you could filter out the noise. Now they're just like, oh, hey, here at Twitter, we'll filter the noise out for you based on our own personal preferences and our own personal uh, uh, agenda, right? So I'm going to talk about the copium here. This is, this is crazy. I saw this yesterday. Reuters, 
was like, we're, Elon's not going to buy Twitter. He's going to be stopped. He's going to be stopped. He's going to get cold feet and he's going to stop. Well, what would give them that idea? What would give them that idea? Oh, hey, look, within a day or two, the U.S. is going to join 55 nations to set new global rules for the Internet. Uh, the U.S. and 55 other nations on Thursday signed a political commitment to push rules for the Internet that are underpinned by democratic values. At a time when the U.S. has accused Russia of, of wielding Internet disruptions as part of its escalating attacks on Ukraine. We're going to use that, I believe, as, as a way to get the public or some of the public on board with more Internet censorship. The commitment called the Declaration for the Future of the Internet, the first such effort of its kind, protects human rights, promotes free flow of information, really? Protects the privacy of users and sets rules for a growing global digital economy among steps to counter what two Biden administration officials call a dangerous new model of internet policy from countries such as Russia and China. So we're going we're gonna to regulate crypto and we're going to regulate information. Legally, we're going to, you know, this, this is a reaction, I believe, to, to Musk uh, uh, wanting to acquire Twitter. The U.S. is witnessing a global trend of rising digital authoritarianism, with countries such as Russia having acted to repress freedom of expression and Twitter, <laughs> censor independent news sites, interfere with elections, promote disinformation, and deny their citizens other human rights. We can't have anybody tinkering with the internet, you know, so people don't get the right information. We can't have, we can't have an authoritarian like a, like a billionaire owning something as, as globally important as Twitter. They're going to try to pull his teeth out. You watch, look at what Russia's doing. Some of the steps China is taking. And I think we see this as a response to these kinds of splinter net tendencies by a number of authoritarian countries around the world. One of the officials said, referring to a characterization of the internet as splintering and dividing due to various factors such as politics. Well, if everybody has the same political opinion, that makes the internet a much safer place for everybody, right? Right? Just ask China. Ask China how that works. Uh, yeah, countries joining the U.S. include Australia, Argentina, Belgium, Canada, Denmark, Georgia, Germany, Greece, Israel, Italy, Japan, Netherlands, the U.K., and the Ukraine. The effort will be launched virtually at the White House on Thursday by Biden's National Security Advisor, Jake Sullivan. Uh, here it comes, guys. They're, they're going to use, I guarantee you, they're going to they're gonna say, hey, this is all about Ukraine, but it's really about, it's really about Twitter. It's really about billionaires buying platforms and making sure that uh, you know, they don't impose rules that would allow for wrong thinking. That's my opinion. I could be wrong. I totally could be wrong, but it's a little convenient, right? <laughs> it's a little convenient. I mean, look at this. Look at Rolling Stone. Rolling Stone, which needs to stick to music, by the way. Rolling Stone, uh, five years ago, Elon Musk is the architect of tomorrow. Inside the inventor's world-changing plans to inhabit outer space, revolutionize high-speed transportation, reinvent cars, and hopefully find love along the way. That was, that was 2017. Yesterday, Elon Musk previews what he'll do with Twitter, serve up his employees for the far right's racist abuse. The fuck? <laughs> I mean, serious, seriously, talk about compare and contrast. What the hell? Uh, now, the New York Times actually had a pretty decent opinion piece, I think. Um, you know, Of course, they're coming under under uh, the microscope too, because people are pointing out, hey, some of these media outlets have very inflated numbers. Like they've got more people following them than they're probably on Twitter. And certainly more people than are legitimately interested in mainstream media news, right? Like constantly following the news. But they put an op-ed piece out where they, they're like, hey, it could be a lot worse. Like you're all freaking out over Elon Musk, but uh, Tesla is actually pretty good. And uh, he promises he's going to try to keep everything fair. And of all the billionaires in the world, this is probably this is probably the best one to have take over the platform. So it's not all doom and gloom, but I guarantee you they're going to try to pull his teeth out. I guarantee you. I mean, we're talking two days into this thing, two days into this thing. And there's so much drama and it's, it's going to be what, like six months until he actually takes over the platform. 
but it's it's going to be daily hit pieces. Uh, Elon Musk is the new Donald Trump for the media. He's the new bad guy. He's the new big bad. You know, um, even if he's not that bad. <laughs> and they loved him a couple of years ago. They hate him now. And uh, he knew this. It's going to continue. The attacks are going to continue. And this is why Twitter needs to be fixed because of bullshit like this. So I'm going to wrap things up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later.